Hey folks, it's a rainy day here in Combo Class, but we just passed 50,000 subscribers on this channel. So I figured I'd make a little thank you video for all of my Combo Lords out there and share a couple fun little numerical coincidences I noticed last night. In any case, for anyone who's watched my videos and those who've commented or chatted with me other places online, Thank you so much. I've been having such a blast teaching this math and science and stuff here. I've always been the type of person to get really carried away on certain creative projects, but I never knew that this particular creative project, Combo Class, where I merged my weird artistic thoughts with my desire to teach things like math, would work out so quickly and so well. And now I spend so much of my free time just letting myself research cool concepts, film them, and show you guys. So thank you for joining me on this wild journey. I started filming the combo class footage for the main channel less than a year ago. I got this good old classic whiteboard that's already taught so much just about under a year ago. And uh, throughout this year, it's been a really difficult year in my life, actually. I had to get two surgeries. I've been dealing with a lot of physical and mental things, but I've found solace in making these videos and having so many of you join me here. So thank you all so much. Thanks to all of the nature and math and magnificent patterns that somehow led us here. And I also wanted to share a couple fun little numerical facts that I noticed when last night I was watching this account tick up to 50,000 subscribers and I it still hasn't fully sunk in that this is even in the five digits of subscribers here because uh, this channel the bonus one was only created barely over two months ago but the footage I started uh, filming of these short videos was started on April 11th of this year which was a day where I was meeting up with a cameraman editor friend to finish working on the intro edit of the first main channel episode and that was the first thing I had filmed for this show but then on that day when we were wrapping up some edits deciding that it was almost about time to start dropping episodes on the main channel uh, my friend suggested why not make some short videos for TikTok and I decided to make some short little math videos ended up having a lot of fun making short ones as well and got carried away making it into a daily habit and then once I started reposting them all here on the YouTube Shorts, apparently both the YouTube Shorts and TikTok algorithms like my short videos a lot, which is awesome. Hopefully they'll like the main channel more and more as time goes on. But in any case, these short videos were filmed on or after April 11th of this year. And last night when I was looking up that date to see how much time had passed since I'd filmed the first short video, really the first footage at all that ended up on this particular bonus channel was all filmed after that date of April 11th. So I looked up how long it had been. Sometimes I like to see the exact amount of days or minutes or hours or something it's been since something happened in my life or how long I've been doing a particular thing. And you gotta be careful with little numerical coincidences like that because coincidences like that can tap into a magnificent synchronicity-based structure of patterns and the interrelated combos of everything. But you also got to be careful not to have some lucky number or seeing some special number occur make you f believe in it too much or go head over heels in certain types of spirituality that may make you lose some objective truths. So I like having lucky numbers as long as you treat them pretty playfully. And I like looking for how many days has passed since a given thing and finding it lucky when that happens to be something like a, tri a you know, a factorial or some cool type of number. So when I looked up how long it had been since April 11th to last night when this channel hit 50,000, which was the range I had been filming anything that might show up on this bonus channel, although I didn't even start posting them here until two and a half or less months ago, I looked up and saw April 11th to last night happened to be exactly 210 days. Now, 210 days, let me uncork this pen, uh, a little chaos here. Um, 210, that number stood out to my head because I recognize that number. 210 is a primordial number. 
It is what you get if you multiply the first four primes together. Two times, three times, five times, seven. It's also a pretty notable primordial prime because it's, uh, I mean, a uh, primordial prime. Sorry if I was already saying that. It is a primordial prime, as they say, because although it can't be prime, it's hanging out neighbors with primes. So 210 is a primordial with friendships with the prime numbers in multiple ways. So that number popped out and I was like, cool. It says online, based on my online date and time calculator, that all the footage on this channel has been filmed in seven primordial days. And then I saw a little lower another number that I recognized even more. It was how many hours it had been since then. If we just counted each day as 24 hours. So it's gonna be a tiny bit off if you do daylight savings and that type of nonsense that our society makes us do. But if you just look at 24 hours times that 210, what we get is 5,040, a super classic number. That's a highly composite number. It has 60 divisors and it's the first number. And remember divisors and factors are the same. They're integers that can split it in a clean, even fashion. And 5,040 is the first lowest number with more than 48 factors. 48 was what the previous highly composite number had, and 5,040 gets all the way past the 50s to 60 factors. So it's a super divisible number, blows the smaller records out of the water, and it's also the last factorial that makes it on the highly composite list, because the later factorials are not thriven enough to be as divisible as the later highly composites. But this one is seven factorial, meaning if I multiply all the numbers up through seven, I get 5,040. And it's also interestingly equal to if I multiply the numbers between seven and 10. If you reassemble these factors, you can see that seven times eight times nine times 10 actually has the exact same components as multiplying all the integers up through seven. So both of these are different ways to express that great number 5,040. And it also means things about permutations, ways of ordering or choosing four things out of 10, or ways of ordering seven total things, because factorials, as I'll show you more in some future episodes, are very deep not only to random math equations, but to the general idea of ordering or structuring or counting things. So 5,040 is a pretty cool one, and since we count time in a pretty divisible way, apart from weeks having that seven randomly, the 60s and 24s are so divisible that we end up going from a primordial to a factorial when we look at how many hours were in those 210 days. And what's kind of cool about that is that means that 210 was seven primordial, which is sometimes written with that number sign hashtag symbol in math. So if seven primordial, multiplying the primes up through seven together is that number, well, when we multiply it by 24 to see the amount of hours, that 24 basically fills in the composites that we're missing in that primordial. We're missing a four and a six, and the other ones were one or the primes. So missing that four and six, we multiply them back in essentially, since we're now counting 24 hours, and we get from seven primordial days to seven factorial hours. And that is exactly how long it's been that any video on this channel has been filmed within the last seven primordial days or seven factorial hours from last night more technically. So it may be a little more than that now. And because these highly composite numbers are so interesting, 
If you've seen my episode about highly composite numbers, you may note that the bigger ones sometimes end up looking like clones of the smaller ones because they inherit some twos and fives that make tens. They inherit some elevens and various different combos that make them sort of stretch out. For example, when we go up the highly composites a bit, what if I wanted to instead know, instead of this, which is a highly composite number that's the first number with more than 48 factors, it has 60 in fact, if I wanted to know the first number with more factors than the number 1 billion, well, the number 1 billion, despite its size, is just a really big base 10, so oh no, the whiteboard and uh, rain do not mix well. Pretend that says the whole 1 billion. Uh, it's a very base 10 -y number, and it's not actually very di divisible, despite its size making us think that. And really, 1 billion has exactly 100 positive normal factors. Numbers that are, you know, positive integers that can divide it without needing a fractional result. So what if I wanted to know the lowest integer that had more factors than a billion? Well, it's going to be a highly composite number because that list, by definition, ends up being the most divisible for their size in the way I'm describing. And so... That we would be looking at the highly composites list for the first number on there, or lowest number, that has more than 100 factors. Not equal to 100 more in this case. Well, the first one that beats the record has 108 factors, and it's way smaller than a billion, because a billion is not very efficient. The one that is... I need to get out another whiteboard marker. Sorry, this rain is going to really mess with my program. So, uh, but, you know, shout out to the rain. I have an outdoor classroom because I love nature, and the rain sometimes has battles with me and my work, but I do love the rain. It's part of nature, and it's part of our world. So I'll shout out the rain anyway. But what I was trying to say, and now I hopefully have a whiteboard marker that'll work here, is that the first lowest number that has... 108 factors, and the first number with more than 100 factors in general, meaning the lowest number with more divisibility than the number 1 billion, is 50,400. It's that one times another 2 and times another 5, which gets that 0 in there. So this is another highly composite record-setting number, and that's actually the amount of subscribers that I'm super proud of hitting. Because 50,000 is not a very divisible number either. There are plenty of small numbers that are more divisible than 50,000. But 50,400, now that's a pretty good number. So thank you to all 50,400 of you. You are awesome and I love you so much. If you want to join more combo class discussions, I'll leave a link here to a Reddit page and to a Discord page that some of my fans have been chatting at. And just stay tuned for lots more fun learning. I got another full episode coming out soon on the main channel, which remember is kind of the big combo class series and my main passion project. I got another one coming out about what if we counted in negative numerical bases, not just making numbers negative, but counting in something like base 10. That'll be coming out in a few days on the main channel. And there's also one, if you haven't seen yet, that's the coolest and craziest and longest combo class episode yet on the main channel about some mysterious sequences and how they relate to strange geometry of the universe. So thanks so much for watching. If you are a super fan and want to help me out in some way, apart from joining those pages, you can also shoot me an email at combouniversity at gmail.com. That's the contact link here. If you want to find a way to help me spread the combo dream, but even if you just want to keep watching and leave a comment here and there, you're awesome. You're a combo lord, and I'll catch you again for some more learning soon.